Hello and welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started hearing from six awesome schools tonight. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to ask your questions at any time. When you type your question, you can include the name of a specific school or schools that you are directing your question towards, or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their institutions. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is so important. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening, so we hope you'll sign up for more to learn about other great schools. This presentation, like all of the presentations, they're being recorded and they're going to be available within about a week at that same website where you can register, strivescan.com slash R-M-A-C-A-C. All right, well, I'm excited to get going tonight. We have a Big Ten lineup for you. We'll be hearing from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, Penn State University, the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, Michigan State University, the University of Iowa, and the Ohio State University. We're gonna be kicking it off first with the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. All right, hello everyone. I'll get my screen shared here quick. Okay. All right, hello, my name is Bridget Lang. I am the Regional Recruitment Representative out based out of Denver for the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Um, I'm from Lincoln originally and graduated from the university in 2018, so I know it pretty well, pretty inside and out. Um, our campus itself, we are about 26,000 total students on campus, so uh, large size, but compared to our Big Ten peers, um, we are one of the smaller um, members of the Big Ten. About 21,000 of that is our undergraduate student population. Um, we have about 150 different areas of study, 150 different majors, so quite a bit to choose from. Some of our top programs being in agriculture, which was our founding uh, basis, so really strong agriculture, biology, environmental science program, as well as um, some fantastic business, engineering, and architecture programs. Uh, we also do a lot of prep for the pre-health fields. And then about one third of our student population is from out of state. So you are in really good company. Uh, a lot of our students are going to be traveling back and forth for holidays and things like that. Uh, really great community on campus to connect into. And we are with that Big Ten um, you know, certification, we have a really strong research base. Um, so we do offer paid undergraduate research in our UCARE program, which is pretty great for students who are hoping to have an on-campus part-time job and get those letters of reference. And we are ranked a top 75 public research institution, um, tier one. So good things if you are interested in research. Uh, about 500 plus different student organizations, um, all the different things from student government to sports clubs to ballroom dance club, a lot of different things to choose from. And uh, I'll talk a little, bit about, a little bit about our scholarships later, but we are among the lowest tuition in the Big Ten. So some really great scholarships that can be awarded to our students. Um, Lincoln itself is about 285,000 total uh, population. Uh, we are extending kind of outside of our city limits, so we're getting pretty close uh, to 300, um, but really great college town. We don't have any pro sports in Nebraska, so all of the love goes towards the Cornhuskers. Um, we are a big football, volleyball, basketball school, a um, lot of love going towards those. And so the campus community around the area, since we are located in downtown Lincoln, very much services our student body. Um, it's definitely a very symbiotic relationship between our student population and downtown Lincoln. So you step off campus, it's coffee shops, restaurants, concert venues, um, as well as internship opportunities. So a lot of our students actually step off campus for their internships. Um, we have some great career centers to help our students kind of uh, get in contact with those internships and post uh, college job opportunities. Some of the popular ones for our students have been Google, Microsoft, um, we have students in our engineering department working for NASA, uh, the Chicago Tribune, um, Huddle is big. We have the headquarters actually based out of Lincoln. So um, their main headquarters is in Lincoln, but they do have international bases all over the world. So really great opportunities for our students there, um, as well as Peter Kiwa is pretty popular with our students and John Deere. 
And then Lincoln itself is actually rated the second most affordable college town in the nation. So really great for our students, especially once they live off campus, since living off uh, living on campus is only required for your freshman year. Um, definitely a great cost of living for our students um, who are trying to keep their college costs reasonable. And we are rated one of the best value schools by US News for 2021. So for um, affordability and education, you're getting a top notch degree. Uh, and then we'll hop into scholarships here quick. Our application will be opening on August 1st for the 2022 year. Um, so August 1st, that'll open up and we are, we have our personal application, we have the Common App and the Coalition App. Um, so depending on where you're planning on applying, works great. It's like a 10 to 15 minute self-reported application. We'll request all of the documents and transcripts to back you up later. But for the original application, really straightforward for our students. And our merit-based scholarships um, for, for admission and scholarship purposes, we are test optional right now. Uh, so we can just evaluate you based on GPA for scholarships, as well as if you do have an ACT-SAT score, we can evaluate you based on GPA and ACT-SAT. So if your GPA isn't the strongest and you have a great ACT-SAT score, definitely make sure to get that sent into us because um, they can kind of balance each other out. But if you have a really strong GPA, we can just evaluate you based off of that um, and you'll be awarded uh, the same scholarship. So uh, we do have some different levels for, to, for you to choose from. Um, these are just a couple of ours listed below. We do have an international baccalaureate scholarship. So if you are an IB student, highly recommend applying. Um, these are automatic consideration, like I said. So no essays, no extra applications. It's all just once you apply and you're admitted, we'll automatically consider you. And then our leadership and diversity scholarships, those are due by February 1st. It is a 500 word scholarship statement that you can do at the time of application, or you can go back and do it later, just get it done before February 1st. Um, but really great. The only extra applications are gonna be for honors programs and learning communities on our campus, um, as well as a couple of specialty scholarships do require extra applications. But otherwise, very straightforward admissions process at our school, and we are rolling admissions. So you can apply at any point in the year, but keep an eye on those deadlines. And that is all I had for you. Um, so if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the question and answer. Um, we will definitely take care of them. If they are specific for me, I can message you privately and get that taken care of. Um, but yes, hope to hear from you. If you do have any questions, uh, I'll put my information in the chat as well. Thanks. Great, thank you so much, Bridget, for sharing the University of Nebraska, Lincoln. All right, we're moving on next to Penn State University. All righty, let me get my timer going. I want to make sure I consider it. All righty. So hi, everyone, and thank you for coming tonight. My name is Christine Schmidbauer, and I'm an undergraduate admissions counselor with Penn State. So I will be taking over Colorado in the summer. So from now until you actually create your application in the fall, I will be your point person. My contact info will be at the end, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have over email about Penn State or anything else that I cover um, throughout this presentation. So my goal tonight is to paint a really big picture of Penn State, what we have to offer, and highlight some of the things that make us stand out. So the first thing that I think makes us stand out is our 20 campus system. When most people think of Penn State, they think of University Park. Um, and that's because it's our largest campus with 40,000 students. It's where we um, play football most Saturdays in the fall. So that's um, what everybody thinks of with Penn State. But we actually offer 19 campuses beyond that. Um, and so if you're looking for a smaller start to college, if you're not ready to dive right into that 40,000 campus, um, we highly recommend that you consider our other campuses as well. The other great thing about them is that they are each located in a very distinct part of Pennsylvania. So if you are looking for um, sorry, I just saw something in the chat. If you are looking for um, a more urban setting, such as Philadelphia or Pittsburgh, we highly recommend looking at Brandywine or Abington or Greater Allegheny. But with University Park, you're going to get that traditional small college town feel. Um, and beyond our uh, campus system, the other thing that I think makes us stand out is that we are a top 1% world class university. This means that out of 18,000 universities, Penn State was ranked number 54. And this is in part because of our top ranked business school, top ranked engineering programs and nursing program, um, but also because of our dedication to student success, as you can see by our 93% retention rate. 
Um, beyond that, we also receive over $1 billion in research expenditures every year. And the reason that that amount is so high is because we have over 275 academic programs. So there's a lot of room for discovery at Penn State, um, but there's also a lot of opportunity for research in multiple fields. So even though Penn State is traditionally known as a STEM school, uh, we also have research opportunities for anyone interested in um, the humanities, such as English literature or education or communications. Um, there's plenty of opportunities for you to dive into a topic that you're super interested in. The other thing that I'll just breeze over is our division of undergraduate studies, and that's essentially our undecided major. One of my favorite things to talk about because um, it's for students who really don't know what they want to do yet. They have so many interests that they just can't pick one, um, but we have advisors in place that can help you figure out which classes to take and which major really suits you. So beyond academics, we offer over 1,200 clubs and activities for students to get involved in. I'm just going to talk about one, um, and it's actually the picture that's in the background. So THON, short for Dance Marathon, is one of the most popular ways for students to get involved on campus. Um, every year, students will fundraise throughout the entire academic year to um, put an end to pediatric cancer. So the students sponsor certain families that have been diagnosed and are going through the treatment for pediatric cancer, and any excess funds that they have from fundraising go towards research to put an end to pediatric cancer. So, not only is it um, the largest student philanthropy in the world with a great cause, but it's also just a great way for students to build that community um, and come together. And we were actually able to um, spend on virtually this year as well to continue that community and to let first year students um, get a taste of it. So I talked about academics, I talked about student life. I wanna talk about our application. It's really simple, similar to Nebraska. Um, our, online, our online application is the first step and there are three ways that you can fill that out. So the first is with the Common app. You can also use the Coalition app or you can create a My, My Penn State profile. Those are the three ways and that's where you will choose your, um, your first choice campus, your alternate choice campus and your major. The next thing is the self-reported academic record. And this is essentially in place of your high school transcript. So we don't actually need your high school transcript until you are a student at Penn State, until you've accepted your offer. So until then, we trust you to report your grades as you receive them. Um, and then we are also test optional, at least until 2023. So if you can't get to a testing center or if you don't think you test well, there's no need to take the test or report the scores if you don't do well but it is completely up to you. And then the last thing is the My Penn State profile, and that's just to keep um, an up-to-date status on your application throughout the review process, but also to receive any other updates and notifications from our office along the way. So this slide is just to give you an idea of where you land with Penn State. As you can see right off the bat, University Park is more competitive than the Commonwealth campuses. Um, but that's why, that's why I started this presentation by talking about them. Because if you're not ready to dive into that really competitive, demanding learning environment, we highly recommend that you start at the Commonwealth campus. You have better access to resources and you have more individualized attention from your professors. So we highly recommend that you consider the Commonwealth campuses um, and eventually transition up to University Park. The last thing I'm going to talk about is our um, alumni network. We have the largest living alumni network in the world with over 700,000 living alumni. Um, we at Penn State like to say once a Penn Stater, always a Penn Stater, because once you graduate, you still have access to um, all of the career services, resources, um, and plenty of events to help you continue building that community that you spend so much time building at Penn State. So I'll just wrap up with my contact info there. Feel free to send me an email about Penn State, the application process, or if you just have any questions about what you want to study or classes that we offer. Um, I'm a first generation college student, so I know that this process can be really overwhelming and I want to make this as easy as possible. So thank you for your time and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, Christine, for sharing Penn State tonight. Our next presentation is going to be the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Good evening, evening everyone. Uh, my name is Rachel Tanner. I am the National Recruitment Coordinator for the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. We are the land-grant flagship institution for the Minnesota System campuses. We're right in Minneapolis, Minnesota, also part of the Big Ten. Um, I know y'all are tuned in to hear more about the University of Minnesota, but it would be insincere for me not to acknowledge 
that in Minnesota, we recently lost a member of our community. Dante Wright was tragically killed at the hands of the police and our thoughts are with his family and friends. Our city is grieving and that's taking many forms. I believe in the university as an institution, I feel it's important to recognize this loss as I'm sure it's on your minds as well. If you have questions at this time regarding our campus or our response, please feel free to reach out to me directly. As you can see, we're right near Minneapolis. We are called the Twin Cities location because we're nestled in between the downtown of both Minneapolis and St. Paul, which is Minnesota's capital. This is the main part of our campus. We catch this train 10 minutes this way, that's downtown Minneapolis. 20 minutes the other way is the downtown of St. Paul. So you get that classic Big Ten college experience uh, while staying in a big urban environment. So academically, we bring breadth and depth. 150 majors, 135 minors, many graduate and professional programs. So if you're considering law school, medical school, veterinary school, PT, OT, we do have those programs on campus. We'll start giving you the free professional advising you need to get into the programs, either on our campus or those across the country. Despite our large size, we do try to keep class sizes small. So 80% of all classes are 50 students or less. 65% of all classes are 30 students or less. So those big classes are general, so you have access to them, but we're always going to pair them with a discussion or lab. So separate time of the week, just to go over what was taught in lecture, so you have the chance to ask questions or get help on something. Uh, the small classes, that's what majors are going to feel more like 30 to 40 students once they're in those higher level major courses. Being the land grant institution for the state of Minnesota, 80% or all um, research happening in the state does happen right on our campus. So you can start participating in that, whether that's pairing up with faculty members or submitting your own research proposal um, to start diving into something you're really interested in. When you apply to the University of Minnesota, you apply into one of our eight freshman and many colleges. We do this for a couple of reasons. The first is we know we're large schools. So we wanna make sure that you come into a smaller community of scholars that share some sort of academic interest as you to make that transition a little bit smoother. The second is that way you have access to the program that you came here for, uh, for. So if you know you want nursing, if you know you want genetics, if you know you want a specific type of engineering, you can start taking those classes right away. Make sure that's the right fit. If it's not, no problem. Um, but that way you figure out sooner rather than later. So with Minnesota being in our location, of course, the popular majors include our business programs at the Carlson School, our sport management program, our health sciences, our direct entry nursing, our genetics program, neuroscience, biomedical engineering, um, we have 13 STEM-based programs, including our NOSIS data science, but we also have phenomenal animal science program, product design, and architecture. Certainly isn't all of them, but if you're interested in any specific programs, feel free to message me and I can share more info about it. Like a good Big Ten school with a lot of opportunities for all to get involved, 900 student organization, 200 student cultural groups, 12 student cultural centers. So a lot of ways for you to find your community on campus, whether that be personal, um, professional, academic, interest-based, identity-based, you want to go Greek, you know that there's a lot of ways to navigate campus. We do have a massive study abroad program and we find it's really important. So we do have programs that will fit with every degree. In fact, our business school requires that you study abroad at some point. So if you are interested in studying abroad, we can certainly help with that. Most of our students choose to live on campus their first year. They want that traditional on-campus experience. We guarantee you a place to live on campus if you'd like to. In our second, third, and fourth year, we do see a lot of students exploring those off-campus opportunities. Dinky Town and Stadium Village or the neighborhoods that surround us that give us that classic Big Ten college experience. Um, they're where you're going to find affordable student housing um, or apartments that have flexible leases for your time abroad. It's where the coffee shops are adjust their hours around finals or pizza by the slice is available at almost any time of day. So it's a really fun quintessential college town feel, but you are still right in an urban environment. It gives our students a huge leg up in terms of professional opportunities. There are 16 Fortune 500 companies headquartered in Minneapolis, St. Paul area. So programs and, and companies like Target, 3M, Fargill, Medtronic are all right here and constantly recruiting out of our programs. Um, that way students can balance an internship at one of the headquarters on a Tuesday and Thursday. So go to class Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And these are big names. So if you want to come to Minnesota and spend your time after your four years here, absolutely. But you can also bring this back anywhere across the country and across the globe. We all are also with our location, fairly easy to get to as an out-of-state student, pretty direct flights from every major airport, of course, Denver, come right to their airport, go downstairs, catch a train. That's the same train that you saw that ran through campus. So it's about a 20 minute cap, right? And we're just a little bit further into the city than the airport is itself. Minneapolis St. Paul is a really fun sized city. We're not a concrete jungle, but there's still a lot to do. And the train coming through campus has really cracked it open. So if you want to go catch a baseball game, there's six professional sports teams within about 10 minutes of our campus. We have concert venues and museums with on and around campus. We have the third most theater seats per capita, second to, or third to New York City and Chicago. So if you like to go to shows, we're a Broadway test market. So a lot going on, whether that's the farmer's market or enjoying the full four seasons. Of course, value should be a huge part of your decision. We've been named a great value institution by a number of prints. That's largely due to the numbers you see at the top, but also our 13 credit policy, which says that we're not going to charge you um, any difference, whether you take 13 credits or 18 credits. 
first semester. We do have a number of academic merit-based scholarships that will automatically consider you for if you choose to apply. For out-of-state students, these range from $2,500, they go up to $15,000. That's each year for all four years. They can be stacked. So to apply to Minnesota, you can apply through the Common App or the Golden Gopher application. Um, and we need the application, $55 fee, and then self-report your grades and courses. So don't send us a transcript, just let us know how you did. We have gone no test required through fall 2022. So if you're a rising senior, you don't need to send it. Still full consideration for admission, honors, and scholarships. Here are three deadlines, equal consideration for all. Just if you're interested in that nursing program, be sure to get it in by November 1. And I'll throw my contact information in the chat. I appreciate your time today, and I will hand it back to Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing about the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. All right, we've heard from three great schools. We have three more to go. Just a quick reminder about that Q&A button. It is a great place to ask more questions. It could be about majors, out of class activities, admissions info, something you want to follow up on, or something you're just curious about all the schools having. So definitely think about putting a question in there. All right, well, now we are going to be heading to Michigan State University. Aspen? Thanks, Jennifer. I am assuming my screen's good. We're good. Um, okay, awesome. Well, my name is Aspen Arnold. I am one of our regional admissions counselors for Michigan State University. Uh, Michigan State is, is a Big Ten research university located in East Lansing, Michigan, just miles away from the state state capital of Lansing. Um, with almost 50,000 total students on our campus, you're going to see that our campus almost feels like a self-contained city. Um, so that bottom right picture is one of my favorite pictures of campus that really shows all that MSU has to offer. Uh, Spartans come from all, all 50 states and more than 140 different countries across the world. In fact, 24% of our uh, students hail from outside of the state of Michigan. Um, when you're looking at our freshman class, uh, this year we, we, um, were, we accepted the most um, applications in our history. So we had the largest uh, applicant pool in our history, um, as well as the most diverse. Um, within our first year of classes, 30% um, of our students identify as students of color and 25% are first generation college students. When you're looking at MSU as an out-of-state student, you're typically looking at MSU for one of our uh, majors in particular. Whether you're completely undecided about your degree path, have comfortably declared a major, or you fall somewhere in between, um, we really think that you're a place to explore many different academic areas. We offer over 200 majors across 17 different degree-granting colleges. Uh, typically, students from out-of-state are looking at us for our Eli Broad College of Business, which is the 13th ranked public business school in the nation our College of Engineering, which is the fastest engineering school in the nation, or our College of Natural Sciences and their associated pre-health programs. On our campus, you'll also find a law school as well as three medical schools, and including one of the top veterinary schools in the nation. As a top 100 global university, we're home to 35 undergraduate programs that rank in the top 25 nationally. Uh, so even though I, I shouted out those three um, academic colleges, know that we really excel in other areas. Um, game development is one of our brand new programs um, that is ranked in the top 10 nationally. Uh, packaging, hospitality business, uh, astrophysics. So you're going to see us excel in a lot of different academic fields. Um, we really think that when you're at MSU, you have access to opportunities uh, to learn outside of the classroom as well as um as well as incorporate multiple academic paths. Again, with many of our students choosing to double major or major and minor in different programs. Um, we are seeing that most of our students are actively seeking internships or volunteer, volunteer activities both on and off campus. All of our out-of-state students are going to automatically receive our Presidential Study Abroad stipend, which is a one-time scholarship of $3,000 or $5,000 um, that can be used at any time within your first eight semesters at MSU um, to take advantage of one of over 275 different education abroad programs. That's why one in three of our students will study abroad at some point in their career at MSU. When it comes to academic research, you've already heard from our peers about um, the amazing research that Big Ten institutions are doing. Um, on MSU's campus, uh, any student in any major has access to research, um, and our honors college students have access as early as their first week on campus. Um, they can find opportunities on our undergraduate research website or connect with a professor to create their own research project. 
I love to get a, a shout out here to the living and learning communities on our campus, which are geared towards students with uh, specific majors or academic interests. Um, this is a really great uh, way for you to make a big university feel a little bit smaller. Three of the programs are residential colleges, so they're actually degree granting colleges um, that give you that smaller learning environment where students have access to professors offices and classrooms inside their residence halls. Um, and again, live with students with similar majors. Um, our residential colleges come first are first come first serve so we'll talk about that application process, and they don't require additional applications or GPA requirements. Um, those three residential colleges are Lyman Briggs College. College, um, for students interested in math, science, computer sciences, uh, James Madison College for students interested in political science, pre-law, constitutional democracy, international relations, and then that third one is going to be our residential college in the arts and humanities for students interested in fine and performing arts, literature, languages, history, civic engagements, basically if you're looking at a Big Ten institution but want a liberal arts degree. Um, I encourage you guys to uh, reach out to your admissions counselor. Hopefully that's me if you're um, in, in uh, the uh, Rocky Mountain region uh, to hear about those opportunities. Our campus itself is located on the banks of the Red Cedar. Um, we're home to botanical gardens, art museums, performing arts venues, Big Ten athletics, recreation sports facilities, and even our own student ran hotel. With over 900 student organizations across campus, there really is something for everyone. Um, and we're situated just across the street from downtown East Lansing, which um, is gonna give you that quintessential college experience with bookstores, um, cute restaurants, coffee shops, uh, kind of a way to connect with uh, the community that you live in. Um, switching gears to uh, wrap things up regarding our application process. You will find our application on the Coalition application, Common App, as well as on our website. Um, we review students holistically, and for the next five years, we will be test optional in that review process. We do have a November 1st early action deadline. If you apply by that date, you're going to be automatically reviewed for scholarships as well as admissions into uh, the nation's oldest honors college. So highly recommend applying by that date, but our regular decision deadline is then February 1st. Uh, I will drop my information in the chat in case you guys have questions and look forward to talking to y'all later. Thank you so much, Aspen, for sharing Michigan State. All right, our next school today is going to be the University of Iowa. Good evening, everyone. Jennifer, can you see the screen okay? Once I do, once I do this. Yes, I can see me, it, but it's it not me. quite a presentation yet. Yep, that looks good. And we can hear you, Chris. Are you gonna turn on your camera during this or no? Just wanna I, check. I sure am right okay, now. Okay, great. Thanks. Good evening, Perfect. everyone. Thanks, Jennifer. Good, uh, welcome or hello from Iowa City. My name is Chris Trado. I'm one of the associate directors. Um, I've had the good fortune for the past 10 years to, to be the counselor, a point of contact for the Rocky Mountain region. So again, thanks for joining us this evening. Um, I always like to start off with um, showing a, trying to paint a picture of what Iowa City looks like and specifically the University of Iowa. Um, so on the right hand side of your screen, you can see our campus. Um, in the front or in the middle, I would say is a gold dome. Um, that's the old capital. Uh, that is the hallmark of the heart of our campus. Um, everything around it for the most part is your Pentacrest, which is where you'll spend the vast majority of your time. You can see in the middle of this photo here where my mouse, my cursor is going over, uh, is the Iowa River. Um, it offers us two sides of campus. The, the part closest to us is uh, what we call the east side and the part on the other side of the river is the west side. Um, I wanna be clear, when you're looking at Big Ten schools or specifically University of Iowa, some people might think they're larger and we are. You know, I'll, I'll talk about my, our student population here shortly. However, I wanna remind students considering us that if you're standing at that gold dome right in front of us um, and you do a 360 in your mind, you're about six, seven minutes north, south, east and west of about 95% of your experience here at the university. What makes us feel a little bit larger is when you go across the river, um, houses um, one of the largest teaching hospitals on the college campus um, in America. And so that's something to take into consideration if you are considering the health sciences, as well as all of our athletic facilities. And at the very bottom of the screen, you're going to, if, if that picture continued, you run right into their downtown Iowa City, which is the home of 100 plus um, 
restaurants, bookstores, boutiques, everything you want in your college experience is literally right across the street. And surrounding us is about 160,000 um, great supporters of our university as well. So that's campus. Let me go back here. So who fills up the walls? Um, here are student profiles. You can see we have about just over 31,000 total students, similar to my counterparts in Lincoln. Uh, we are one of the smallest Big Ten universities um, of choice. Uh, we also have about 4,500 first year students this past year. You can see our breakdown of residents and non-residents. We had a little bit of uptick this last year for probably a multitude of reasons of residents, but we always try to pride ourselves on being really close to 50-50 in state out of state. And you can see our profile on the right hand side of the screen. With regards to academics on campus, um, you're gonna notice that we have over 200 areas of studies. Um, some of our most popular majors for incoming first year students are um, Tippy College of Business, uh, majors in the College of Engineering, Sports and Recreation Management, uh, English and Creative Writing, and all the health sciences, I, as I mentioned earlier, such as neuroscience, nursing, public health, and medicine, to name a few. Um, and honestly, coming in as undecided is, is, is very acceptable as well. And we're seeing more and more students do that and try to navigate this process as far as where they want to be in a couple of years, or even one year for that matter. How to apply. Um, as you can see here, our application opens in August. Uh, we have three ways to be able to submit the application. Uh, you can, we have an institutional opportunity, institutional app, the common application, as well as the coalition application. Um, and we do make decisions on a rolling basis. So we are rolling admission, um, but we will have this, this upcoming year, a November 1st early action deadline. So if you feel like you wanna get notification earlier and allow us to be able to guide you through this process, I would encourage you to apply before November 1. We have two ways to get admitted on the right-hand side, upper right-hand side, you'll see our RAI formula, which is a region admission index. That's um, brought to us by our state. Um, we look at your ACT or your SAT score if you have one. We look at your grade point average. You can utilize your weighted GPA if you choose, and many students do, um, and your number of core classes. So the more academic core classes to take, um, the better it looks, makes you look on a piece of paper. And, and obviously, honestly, you've challenged yourself as well. So those are all things to consider. If you do not, if you use that, you can use the score at the very bottom and it's very transparent. If you hit that 255 as a non-resident, congrats, you're admitted. If you do not um, supply a test score, as we are test optional again this next year for our rising seniors, um, then we will look at you more holistically and potentially ask for a personal statement um, and as personal statement and transcript as well. 34th best public school, very similar to my peers. We're so fortunate to be in an in a academic conference like the Big Ten. Um, great research opportunities, great accolades, um, 15 to one student to faculty ratio. I usually hang my hat that about 80% of our classes have less than 30 students. Um, so you will have that intimate um, classroom experience in the sense of being able to know your faculty um, and specifically the students that sit to your right and to your left. And then finally, before I jump out of this, um, this is what's important too for our students. I mean, you're getting a, a world-class education, but how can you complement that with extracurricular activities and or experiences like this that you see on the screen? So this is historic Kinnick Stadium, um, 70,000 people. On the left-hand side, you will see the Stead, Stead Family Children's Hospital, uh, which many of you know from the WAVE. Um, if you don't, at the end of the first quarter, um, every individual, including the teams and officials, will turn around and wave at all the kids um, who are in that children's hospital on the 11th to 12th floor. It's a very moving, um, inspirational piece that became came to us very organically a couple of years ago. Um, and so that, again, is part of your experience as well. Um, and again, Iowa City, classic college town nestled into between many, many metros. Um, so good place to call home. And then finally, how you get a hold of us. Um, like, like all my colleagues have spoken so far, we're here to help you. Um, so I will post my information in the chat here shortly. And again, do not hesitate. We all wanna be resources for you um, and make this, make this college transition process as seamless as possible. So thanks again for your time. Um, go Hawks. Thank you so much, Chris, for presenting on Iowa tonight. All right, we've heard from five great schools. One more to go. Attendees, don't forget about that Q&A box. And next, we're going to be hearing from The Ohio State University. Well, good evening, everyone. And hopefully my screen looks good. Um, thanks for the A-OK. -okay. Um, my name is Tracy Schumann, and I'm with The Ohio State University, located in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Uh, it's 7 p.m. here on Eastern Standard Time. 
So, uh, or 734, I should say. Uh, so glad that you're here. Um, I am the representative who covers um, students in the Colorado region. Um, so again, you can contact, contact me directly and I will share that information later in the chat or you can email our admissions office at askadmissions at osu.edu. So for you to learn a little bit more about Ohio State, let's talk about some numbers. Um, we are a very large and complex, in complex institution with over 65,000 students on our campuses. We offer over 200 different majors and 500 specializations for you to choose from from study, um, providing lots of different things to study at the university. And while we are a large place and we have many, many students enrolling at the university every year, we're still very proud of the fact that we like to bring um, our education as a personal, um, very hands-on experience for you, boasting a 19 to one student to faculty ratio and 80% of, of our classes actually having less than 50 students. Um, from an academic perspective, um, really the, the sky's the limit. As an undergraduate uh, student, you will be able to choose from 15 different academic colleges or areas of study. Uh, many of those are lifted, listed here on the screen, um, as well as a variety of graduate and professional schools at Ohio State. So many of our students start uh, right out of high school and continue all the way through those graduate and professional programs because of the variety of offerings in the different schools and areas of study that you can take advantage of. Um, as far as some of our rankings, we are a uh, top 20 public institution. We are ranked number one in the state of Ohio. Um, and so we really are uh, providing you that academic quality that students are looking for, um, especially as you're traveling across the country. And again, as many of my colleagues has mentioned, um, being part of the Big Ten, um, again, provides you the opportunity to really study at some of the, the best research institutions in the country. Um, giving you that comprehensive feel as you're looking to uh, complete your degree and begin your career or go on to graduate or professional schools. Some things that we really like to highlight is, again, the out-of-classroom learning experience. And so while we feel very confident in the academics that you're going to get in the classroom, we really want students to take advantage of those out-of-classroom experiences, whether it's research or study abroad or internships and co-ops. All of our new first year students at Ohio State are given a brand new iPad Air through our digital flagship program. This is a program that we have with Apple um, that happens, uh, we've had for about three years now. And so all new students are awarded and given a, a new iPad, iPad Air to keep for all four years. Our first year experience program is ranked nationally. Um, when we enroll every year, about 76, 7,700 students and 95% of them are coming back for their second year, we know that we're doing something right, that students are feeling engaged on our campus, they are getting the resources they need, and they're truly making Ohio State a home away from home. That support, though, does not end after the first year. And in fact, we have a program dedicated for our second year students, where we offer faculty membership and funding for up to $2,000 for students to begin a research project a study abroad opportunity, or perhaps it's living expenses for that internship that you've been preparing for. Some of our special programs, the Moral Scholarship Program is a diversity and social justice-based scholarship program that can go up to the full cost of attendance for our most competitive applicants. We also have an engaged honors program and scholars program for those students who are really looking for an enhanced academic experience, um, as well as also building community very early on. And we also have 19 different learning communities for students to choose from. Again, building that community, building those connections within the residence hall in the first year. Um, we know that when students do that, they're more likely to be successful, um, engaged in our campus. Now, the city of Columbus is a great asset to our students. Um, being that it's the capital of the state of Ohio and the top um, 15th largest metropolitan uh, city in the country, it really provides you the best of both worlds of having this great comprehensive uh, research institution that has a college campus feel, but knowing that just a few minutes down the road, you have the city of Columbus to take advantage of. It's very accessible to get to, it's very affordable, um, and it's really a great asset for our students. Um, as you can see here on the map, it gives you an idea of the location. Our airport is very easy to get to. It's about a 15 minute drive from campus. So wherever you're coming from throughout the country, um, Columbus is an easy city to navigate and pretty easy for you to get to. Um, we also like to, to share the information about um, Columbus and that it is a diverse and engaged 
part of our campus community. Um, you really have the opportunity to fit in or to stand out and to take advantage of some of the best cultural and different um, uh, sports and entertainment um, and different great neighborhoods and festivals all throughout the city. Um, again, that really enhances your academic and collegiate time at Ohio State. Um, when you're applying, you will use the common application to apply to Ohio State. We are two test optional for the year 2022. So you'll just need to send those official high school transcripts if you do not want to send those official uh, ACT or SAT test scores. November 1st is our early action deadline. And I encourage you to meet that because it is also our scholarship deadline. So any merit scholarships that you may be interested in, um, you must meet that November 1st deadline. It's also priority for engineering, the moral scholarship program um, and our honors and scholars program. We also have a very uh, robust non-resident uh, non scholarship of up to $13,500 for students to apply early. And for you to learn more about Ohio State, here are some helpful websites. And as I mentioned, I will uh, add some important links in the chat as well. Thank you everyone for joining. And as always, go Buckeyes. Thanks Tracy so much for sharing the Ohio State. All right, well, we have a few more minutes uh, together. I wanna to make sure that our attendees can get all of the contact information from the chat, that all of our representatives can have their information in there too. And to give our attendees a couple of minutes just to think any questions I wanna ask or anything you wanna follow up on right now. Uh, so while we're doing that, I do have a live Q&A question. I'd love to invite all of our representatives to come back on camera together as a group. Um, and I'd love to hear from each of you about a, um, this is to be yours, but a favorite event, tradition, program on campus, and be academic, student life, career related, um, just to give a further taste of what makes each of your campus communities just so unique and special. We'll go in the exact same order that you presented in. So we'll begin with the University of Nebraska Lincoln and then work our way through one through six. As the representative ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your microphone um, and answer the question. We'll just flow right through. So thanks for. Um, starting us off, Bridget. All right. So um, generally, probably Husker football games, but that's a, a no brainer. But um, one thing that we really do that's special that um, really, really love, it's called the big event. And it's basically a huge volunteer day. Thousands of our students participate and it's all over Lincoln and the surrounding areas um, doing a sort of volunteer work. And it's a full day. Uh, snacks and drinks and music and fun provided uh, in the afternoon once everyone's done with their volunteering. Um, and it's just a really great way for us to give back to the Lincoln community, um, you know, regardless of people's ability to volunteer on a regular basis. It's just a really fun big event. So for Penn State, I would say I really love the blue and white game that we host in the spring. So Penn State Obviously, like many of the people here with me, we're known for our football um, in the fall, but the spring semester is really more like the winter semester. So winters last a long time in State College, Pennsylvania. And so um, usually right around the time of the blue white game, the sky is starting to clear. Um, everything's a little bit warmer. And so students can come together to enjoy a spring practice for our football team. And it's really great to see everybody out and enjoying sunshine again. Um, so it's a really great tradition that we have at Penn State. I will say for Minnesota, my favorite tradition, uh, an event that we host on campus is our spring jam. It's kind of like homecoming, but in the spring. Um, and we bring in carnival rides and food vendors. And we have a series of concerts all the way from Battle of the Bands of our student performers up to bringing big names to perform in our football stadium. Um, so like Lizzo or some big fun events. Uh, anyway, just a nice way, like um, Penn State, we also have long winters. So when everything starts to thaw, they can enjoy the outside uh, before we buckle down for finals. Well, speaking of finals, Rachel, so our students are in the middle of finals right now, so I think I should shout out one of our uh, finals week traditions. Um, so we participate in midnight scream. So every single weeknight <laughs> during finals week, our students open up their windows, they run outside of the library and let it all out um, and go ahead and scream and try to release some of that anxiety. Um, and I think it's just a really good way to bring everybody together and kind of celebrate the end of the semester, but also um, um, kind of remind y'all that you're in it together. 100% agree, Aspen, that's awesome. Um, mine is, I'll, I'll go back to the wave has been one that that's um, surfaced about five years ago and that's tremendously impactful, not only for our university, but for our state. Um, 
in previously before that, similar to what Christine mentioned, Dance Marathon was a, is such a big deal and such a significant um, student organization on our campus as well, where they raise over millions of dollars for our for our children across the river in the in the hospital as well. So a lot of a lot of p things that you can do on all of our campuses that can make tremendous impact. So have a good night. And I would just add, other than being able to yell out OH and have someone yell out IO back to you wherever you go in the world, um, the singing of Carmen, Ohio, which is our alma mater, uh, that we sing at the end of football games, uh, that we sing at the beginning of meetings, at the end of meetings, it is truly, an, I think, an honor to our past, our present, and our future. And it's just a really great tradition of one of many at Ohio State, but one that I know that I love and that our students love as well. I love the answers to these questions because it just is a fun way to showcase just those big and little traditions that just bind people together and events that, you know, bring the whole community um, into that spirit. So thank you all for sharing tonight. I hope that for our attendees and for those who are going to be watching this on recording, that all of this tonight from these six minute presentations, this extra question at the end has just made you more curious. You've only gotten a sneak peek. Six minutes can't cover what all of these schools have to offer, but I hope that from the different events and the pictures and these traditions that something has caught your eye that you think, oh man, maybe I could be, I could be a part of that. I could see myself or I want to explore more. Um, so as we end tonight, I first want to thank all of our representatives. Thank you all for being here, for sharing not just those facts and figures about the ambitions process and the logistics and all those numbers, but just the passion, the energy you have for your students' experience in and out of the classroom on each of your awesome campuses. To everyone watching, whether live or on recording, again, thank you for taking the time out to learn, to explore, and please follow up. These admissions representatives and their colleagues are your number one resource. Like I said, this is just a small peek at each of these schools, so please grab that contact info, follow up, ask more questions, because there's so much more to learn as you navigate your college search process, and the admission counselors are your number one resource, and they're here to support you and encourage you and help you and your family all along the way. So tonight, when you exit, when you close that window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey. We appreciate any feedback that you can provide. I promise students, I'm really serious. It's really short. So thanks for filling that out. Again, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted for students as a part of the Rocky Mountain programming. We hope that you have attended other sessions and are excited to sign up for more that are following. And in about a week's time, you'll find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at that same website where you register, strivescan.com slash R-M-A-C-A-C. So thanks again, everyone, for being here tonight and best wishes in your college search and decision journey. It might get overwhelming and it might seem like a lot, but I promise you it's a really fun adventure as you figure out where your life's taking you next. Have a great night, everyone.